Allocele, emphalo refers to the navel, also known as the belly button, or more formally the umbilicus, which is the attachment site of the umbilical cord. And seal relates to hernia or swelling. Umphalocele, therefore, is when some of the bowels herniate out into the umbilical cord. During the fourth week of fetal development, the embryo starts to change shape from a flat, three-layered disc to something more shaped like a cylinder, a process called embryonic folding. In the horizontal plane, the two lateral folds eventually come together and close off at the midline, except for at the umbilicus, where the umbilical cord connects the fetus to the placenta. This folding allows for the formation of the gut within the abdominal cavity. During around the sixth week of development, the liver and intestines grow really quickly, and because the abdominal cavity is still pretty small, there's limited space, which causes the midgut to herniate through the umbilical ring into the umbilical cord. And this happens normally. At about week 10, though, the abdominal cavity typically is grown enough to allow the midgut to come back from the umbilical cord. With omphalocele, the midgut, along with potentially other organs from the abdominal cavity, fail to return back to the abdominal cavity, and therefore stay in the umbilical cord all the way through fetal development and even after birth. Now, since the intestines and potentially other organs aren't meant to be in the umbilical cord, there can be complications like the abdominal cavity not growing to its normal size, as well as pinched blood vessels and loss of blood flow to an organ. So with an emphalocele, after birth the abdominal organs protrude out of the body, but are contained within the umbilical cord, meaning the organs are sealed by a peritoneal layer. In contrast, a related defect called gastroschisis involves the abdominal contents herniating out of the abdominal cavity as well, but it happens through a separate hole in the abdomen. So in this case, the intestines aren't covered by a layer of peritoneum. Although the cause of emphalocele is ultimately unknown, it's likely a result of both genetic and environmental factors. Some cases of omphalocele are due to underlying genetic disorders, like trisomy 13, trisomy 18, trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome, and Beckwith-Vitamin syndrome. Also, certain factors have been found to increase the risk of a woman having a baby with omphalocele, like consumption of alcohol and tobacco during the pregnancy, use of certain medications like SSRIs, as well as obesity. Diagnosis can be done before birth or prenatally through detailed fetal ultrasound or lab tests, screening for increased maternal serum alpha fetoprotein levels. If not detected prenatally, omphalocele are obvious right at birth. Treatment of omphalocele involves surgery following birth, in which the intestines and organs need to be placed back in the abdominal cavity and the defect repaired. If the omphalocele is large, then the organs might have to be slowly moved back into the abdominal cavity over a period of time. Alright, as a quick recap, omphalocele is when the intestines, and potentially other organs, fail to return to the abdominal cavity from the umbilical cord, allowing them to protrude outside the belly but inside the umbilical cord. In contrast to gastroschisis, the abdominal contents are covered by a layer of peritoneum.